Okay, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about managing your calendar. Um, the last few weeks we were talking a little bit about the calendar in regards to tasks. Um, I, when I think of the calendar, I think of events and tasks. Your events are your appointments and of course your tasks are uh, your to-dos. Um, so they both really make up the calendar. Um, today we're going to focus more on the um, events and how to manage those. Okay, so um, when you log into Sycamore, of course, you're going to be on your home page, and you have a link over here to your calendar. Uh, also, if you scroll down past your dashboards, you will see your um, calendar as well. You'll see your tasks listed here. You'll see your events um, listed here for the next few days. And then over here on the right, um, you see your calendar, and you see these icons. Okay, So you can access your calendar um, using these icons, or you can use your link up here on the left. I'm going to click on this link. And when I click on the link, usually um, I was playing around with this, so let me put this back to what you will normally see. Okay. Um, okay. So normally when you go into your calendar, you're going to be on a single user view for one day. And this is what that looks like. And um, I'm going to see my appointments on the left here with um, my subject and then who I have it linked to. And remember, you always have your hover links. Um, and these hover links can be adjusted. Um, if you want to see different fields on here, it is a global change. So your system admin would have to do that. Um, but, you know, you, the event ones show pretty good fields here. And then we see our tasks over on the right, and we talked about those in length the last couple sessions. So up top here we have a 7, and that will give us a 7-day view of our calendar. And then, of course, a monthly view of our calendar. Okay. Um, but all of these are showing my calendar. That's what I'm looking at by default. And you can switch to other people's calendars, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But besides the single calendar, you can do a multi-calendar view. And this is when you want to see other people's calendars. Now, by default, so I'm on a seven-day view, or I'm going to go back to one-day view. It's a little confusing when you look at it that way. Um, so when you first come in here to the multi-user calendar, you're going to see everybody in your firm. So if you have a large firm, um, you're going to see a lot of people listed there. Okay. So um, it is a way to see what people have going on, what their availability is. Um, generally, depending on the rights in your system, you can hover over somebody's name and it'll tell you what the details of that particular um, appointment. Whether you can edit that appointment or not depends on the rights that you have to that person's calendar, and I'll show you how you can um, ask, access uh, the rights for other people. Okay, um, but one thing that you want to do, and we talked about this last week in creating views, is you may want to create a view um, for the people that you work with. Okay, so um, if you go in here, you can say create view, and then you can give it a name and put in what you want. So I did one over here. I'm going to say my team. Okay, and then I'm going to click on edit. And I have here, um, this is, you know, this is a sample database. So one user's name is standard and the other user's name is admin. But basically you can say full name contains and you can put in the people's names that you want to show on that particular calendar. Okay. And then you can say that it's just visible to you or visible to other users. Now again, whether you can come in here and create these views, whether you have the rights to or not, if you don't have the rights, you can ask your system admin to create that view for you. Because if you're going into the multi-view and you're seeing everybody in your firm, um, you know, it's not going to be very uh, efficient for you. So you definitely want to have a view for that. Okay. And then um, this button here is your activity list. Now, this will show you, we looked at this last week for the um, tasks, but this will also show upcoming events. It's just another way of looking at your events that you have coming up. Um, again, you can create any kind of view that you want. So some people like to look at it in a list view where they might want to print it out. Remember, you always have your print button over here where you can print out any list view. Um, and it just gives you all of your appointments um, you know, in a list view. So you can use that as well. 
So if I go back to my single user view, and I'm going to go to my seven day view, and I'm going to create an appointment for next week. So I'm going to go to my calendar up here, and I'm going to go to next week. Okay, and I'm going to go to the 29th here, and I'm going to click on the plus sign. So of course there's several ways that you can create events. This is one way. So that's going to bring me up to the 29th. Um, it will bring me to the current um, time, okay, or the next hour within the current time. So if I click on that box, I will then be given a drop down. It will always default to one hour later, which is kind of nice, uh, but of course you can change that. The subject, you're going to put in there whatever you want, and that's what's going to show up on your calendar. This little lookup has certain um, subjects that are put in there by your system admin. So if you want to request certain um, subjects, you can put those in there. Okay. The um, admin user, that's me, and that's who this appointment is um, owned by. Okay, so I'm scheduling it for myself and I'm going to own it. So whoever's name is in here is the person who owns that particular record. So you can make appointments for somebody else, but they're going to own that record. So if you do not have rights to their calendar, then once you assign it to them, you can't get back to it. Okay. So people have to give you the rights to their calendar, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So you can, um, you know, of course, go into this lookup, and you can look up other people and assign that appointment to them. But if it's for you and you want to invite other people, then that's something different. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Now, over here on the left, I find is what most people wind up ignoring. I'm sorry, on the right. Most people wind up ignoring. Um, you want to relate your events to either contacts in your system or accounts in your system. Now, most of you use accounts. All of your clients are accounts. Um, any professionals that you work with are generally accounts. Um, most of you don't use contacts, actually. Um, so if you want to link this to your client, you'll come over here, Related To, and you're going to come up to the top of that list and say Account. And then, of course, go to your lookup. And then you're going to pick your client. And that makes it so that that client's name shows up on your calendar and so that when you go to that client's account record, remember we have the related lists at the top and we see open activities, it'll list this activity in that client's um, account so you can see that you have it coming up. Location is up to you, um, how you want to show this. Uh, you know, generally busy is what we want. If you're on vacation, you could say out of office, um, that kind of thing. Description is up to you. Uh, we can create recurring events. That's if you want to have like a staff meeting every Monday, um, you know, you get this type of option here. So you could say daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. And if I say weekly, for example, then I can pick the day. And then you do have to put an ending time. Um, Outlook doesn't force you to put an ending time, but Salesforce does. Um, generally, the easiest thing to do is to just say calculate the ending time, and that will give you the maximum amount that you can put in of that recurring event. So for weekly, we can go out one year. Um, so it depends on what it is you're selecting. They decide how far you can go out. Okay, so that's a recurring event. I'm going to turn that off, actually. And then your reminder. You can have reminders uh, for this particular event, and it will pop up that many um, amount of time before the event, and um, you can turn the reminders off if you don't want a reminder. At the bottom of the screen is where we can invite people. Okay, so I'm going to go and say I want to invite someone, so I'm going to click on select, and I'm going to put in a person's name here. So I'm going to select from users, leads, and contacts. I could come in here and say I just want to select users or leads or contacts. So even if it's a person, a professional, that you want to invite to your meeting. If you have a record on them, then you can invite them to the meeting. I'll say users and I'll put in my name. And then I click that and I want to add me. And then I say done. Okay, so now my name list is listed down here. And then I'm going to automatically, no matter what, you get an email. 
if you're invited to a meeting. And then in that email, you can click on it and you can accept it or decline it. Um, you do have to log in to Salesforce to accept it or decline it, um, but that is the way it works. Okay, so I'm going to say save and send update, and that will send the update. Um, if I do click save, I guess I, I did say it will email no matter what, but if you click save, it will not send that invitation out. Um, you can check spelling and then um, cancel. So you have these same buttons at the top or at the bottom. So I'm going to click Save and Send Update. Okay. And then there's my appointment on my calendar there. And I can go back to it. It's going to pull it up. Okay. And then once I go back to it, I can see that um, Denise was invited, but she hasn't responded yet. So it will give you a little um, synopsis down here of who has replied and accepted and who hasn't, which is really nice. And you can see that up here as well. Okay, so I should get that um, email. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so if I say respond to this request, it'll ask me to log in, and then I can say yes or no. Um, I'm not going to do that because it'll kick me out of this admin one, but that's what the email um, looks like. Okay, so um, if I go to my multi-day now, um, and I say all users, I didn't add Denise to my view, um, then I can see that appointment listed over here. Okay. Now, if you want to give rights to somebody else to see your calendar, you're going to go up here to your name. You'll have your name up here. You're going to go to um, Setup. And you're going to go over here to the left to My Personal Information. And then Calendar Sharing. Now, if you're a community user, you do not have this option. Um, but if you're a full Salesforce user, you do have this option. And I click on Calendar Sharing. And then I want to add. And then I want to go into users. And then I can add a person. After you add a person, you want to come down here to calendar access. Show details and add events is the default. Um, but generally, if you want to give somebody full access to your system, allowing them to um, edit your appointments and such, you have to give them full access and then you click Save. So now if I want to switch to Denise's calendar, I go to the calendar. Again, it's always going to show me mine by default. From the daily view, you do have to be on the um, single user, sorry, single user view, and the daily view. This is Um, so you see up here, change. Okay, I'm sorry, you also have the share my calendar up here as well. So if I click change, then it's going to show me who I have rights to. I can pick that person, and now I'm seeing Denise's calendar. And then I can go in, and I can edit that calendar. This is the one I was invited to, so accept it. Okay. And then when you want to go back to yours, you just click back to my calendar. And that will take you back to your calendar. So I'm going to go now to this client. So I'm going to hover over there and I'm going to go click on, hyper click on their name. And looking across my hover links, I'm going to go to open activities. And there is my initial consultation. I do see the icon for multiple people, which indicates that another, at least one other person has been invited to this uh, appointment. Okay, so that's where you would view it. Now, the way the events work is as soon as that event passes, so right after um, the 29th, it's going to show up in my activity history. Okay, um, from here, you can create a new event. So I can go right to new event. Um, so that's convenient, but the issue is you don't see your calendar, okay? So you don't know if you're available. 
or not. But that is a quick and easy way to add an event that's automatically linked to that particular client. And you can fill in that information. Another little feature which is nice, um, I don't know how much people use it, but it's kind of cute. If I go to my client list here and I scroll down, so I see my list, and then at the bottom of the list I have an open calendar. So if I click open calendar, it opens up my calendar. So now I can see my calendar and my clients at the same time. Okay? And if I go to next week, let's say, and I take a client and I drag them down, it's going to put an appointment there. So that's kind of a nice little drag and drop way of creating an appointment. And it links it to that client automatically. Okay, and then you can say close calendar. So again, from the account view, you can go into one of your list views, scroll down to the bottom, open your calendar, and then you can drag a person onto your calendar, and it pops up the window. You type in your description, click Save, and you've created an appointment. Okay, so that doesn't give you the option to invite or anything like that, so you'd have to come into it, click Edit, and then you could go down and invite other people. So it's just a quick, a quick add way of adding in events. Okay, and that's how you can manage your calendar and events. Um, does anyone have any questions?